understanding the SpaceX Draco and Super Draco engines and hypergolic fuels. Propulsion in space can be as simple as mixing two liquids together. You don't have to do anything else. All you need are two pressurized tanks, a combustion chamber, and a nozzle. One tank contains a hypergolic fuel like unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine and a hypergolic oxidizer like dinitrogen tetroxide, called usually just nitrogen tetroxide or NTO. These two are commonly used together. When they make contact, they ignite and rapidly combust. This simple design was used in many rockets for a long time and is still used in most systems to maneuver the ship in space. The systems that pitch, roll, and yaw the ship is called the Reaction Control System, or RCS. Hypergolic engines can be fired many times. Hypergolic fuels can be stored for long periods of time in space and on the Earth. Hypergolic fuel was used in Titan II rockets by the United States, is still used in the Proton rockets made by Russia, as well as some Chinese and Indian rockets, and a simpler but more efficient version powers the Draco and Super Draco engines in the SpaceX Dragon capsule. Let's take a moment to understand hydrazine. Plain hydrazine is N2H4. It can be mixed with sodium nitrite to inflate airbags in cars. This is a perfect solution for something that is rarely needed but must work every time. We could run the hydrazine over a catalyst like iridium with high surface area aluminum oxide as a monopropellant. This reaction forms nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. It will also form some ammonia and nitrogen gas. The first two reactions are very exothermic and give off a lot of heat. Then the ammonia and remaining hydrazine will break down into nitrogen and hydrogen gas. This is actually an endothermic reaction and absorbs a little bit of that heat. So hydrazine can break down into nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, or ammonia. The ammonia will then break down into hydrogen and nitrogen gas by combining with more hydrazine. The first two reactions are extremely exothermic and the last is a little bit endothermic. If we replace one hydrogen with a methyl group, we get a more stable liquid. We call this monomethyl hydrazine or MMH. This is what SpaceX uses in the Draco and Super Draco engines. If we replace two of the hydrogens with methyl groups, we have more reactants to combust and an even more stable liquid called UDMH or unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine. These chemicals, hydrazine, monomethyl hydrazine and unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine are often mixed together and given other names. A common combination is 50% hydrazine and 50% UDMH and called Aerozine 50. It was developed by Aerojet in the 1950s as a storable rocket fuel and was used in the Titan II ICBM. A 75% UDMH and 25% hydrazine hydrate fuel mix is called UH-25 and was used in the Ariane 1 through the Ariane 4 by the European Space Agency. Hydrazine and MMH are also combined. It is more energetic but not as stable as hydrazine and UDMH. These fuels are often used to power the rocket engines on many interplanetary probes. They were used to land the Mars Viking landers. Aerozine 50 is liquid at room temperature and can be stored in a liquid state without significant boil off. The mixture is not used as a monopropellant as the extra stability limits reactivity and it is less energetic than monomethyl hydrazine. It was used by the Apollo Ascent vehicle through the Bell 8247 rocket engine. These chemicals are all very toxic and carcinogenic and protective gear must be worn at all times. You will notice that when the U.S. Space Force is servicing the U-37B robotic space plane, they are always wearing hazmat suits. This is not necessary with the Dream Chaser spacecraft. It uses propane and nitrous oxide as fuel and oxidizer respectively, running them through a vortex engine made by Orbitec. It also uses an ethanol-based fuel in its reaction control system. This is also non-toxic. There are other non-toxic hypergolic rocket fuels being developed, such as CINCH or CINCH, which stands for Competitive Impulse Non-Carcinogenic Hypergol, 
which is made of 2 dimethyl amino azide. The Draco thrusters on the SpaceX Dragon 2 capsule use monomethyl hydrazine, or MMH, and nitrogen tetroxide, or NTO. These are small engines used to reorient the craft in space. You saw them firing constantly as the Dragon 2 capsule came into dock with the International Space Station on its historic flight on 30 May 2020. Draco thrusters generate 400 newtons of force and are similar to the RCS thrusters used on the Apollo service and lunar modules that use the classic Marquette R4D engines. There are 16 Draco engines on the Dragon 2 capsule. You can see these clustered in functional groups around the body of the capsule, with more noted elsewhere. The Super Draco thrusters also use MMH and NTO. They are similar to, but much bigger and more powerful than, the Draco thrusters. These can produce up to 73,000 newtons of force, but usually operate at 68,170 newtons to improve stability. They were originally planned to be used for propulsive landing, but NASA was not excited about this new concept. These engines can be throttled from 20% to 100% power and can ignite and go to full thrust in only 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. The engines are now used for escape aboard emergencies, so I suspect that if the parachutes failed completely, this system would come online to try to save the astronauts and the ship by landing propulsively. These engines can be restarted, but it was found that a valve stayed open too long and allowed some nitrogen tetroxide to backflow into a helium pressure line. This froze, and when the system repressurized, was sent like a bullet into a titanium valve, causing it to combust and setting off an explosion that destroyed the vehicle. SpaceX has replaced the reusable valves with non-reusable burst valves to prevent this from happening again. The Super Draco engines are 3D printed using laser centering of Inconel, an alloy of iron and nickel. Composite carbon overwrapped titanium pressure vessels hold pressurized helium and use this to push fuel and oxidizer into the engines. Flaps cover the engines so that if they are not fired, seawater won't get into them during splashdown and recovery. This allows the capsule to be refurbished and reused several times. So the Draco and Super Draco engines are both pressure fed, meaning high pressure gas, in this case helium, moves the propellant and the oxidizer. They don't need pumps. You can open a valve from the carbon composite overwrap titanium pressure vessel to the fuel tank and pressurize that tank. It is now like an aerosol can. If you open the valve from the tank, the fuel will flow to the combustion chamber. The exact same thing works for the oxidizer. As fuel and oxidizer flow into the combustion chamber and the pressure in those tanks starts to drop, the ship will repressurize them from the helium tanks. There is no need for an igniter. Many rocket engines need an ignition system, usually triethyl borane or TTB and triethyl aluminum or TTA. These ignite on contact with the air and account for the green glow you will see just before an engine using RP-1 or hydrogen starts. These are like flares that burn extremely hot to start combustion. Once combustion starts, it will continue until the flow of fuel and oxidizer stops. This is fine for big engines that restart a few times and are burning non-hypergolic fuels. For getting the astronauts off the moon, using hypergolic engines that don't need an igniter removes a possible failure point. For making small changes to your ship's attitude in space, it will be a long time before something better than this comes around. If we look at a cutaway of a capsule, we can see the quad cluster of Draco engines. There are four of these spaced around the ship. This allows the astronauts to fire all four pointing backward to move the ship forward, to fire all four pointing forward to move the ship back, to fire just those pointing in one direction to move side to side, or to fire in opposite directions on opposite sides of the ship to spin the capsule. This is how Dragon, and every other large spaceship since Apollo, including the Space Shuttle, reorients itself in space. So when it has to work the first time, every time, nothing beats the simplicity of hypergolic rocket engines. Get to know them well, they'll be with us for a while longer.